During the uh, first film, Into the Great Solitude, um, I was given a letter by a friend to read on the journey at some point, and in the film I read it in Hawk Rapids, and it's quite lovely. I framed it so that I had a record of it, and it's from the poet James Merrill, and if you see it, he's even put a stamp of T.S. Eliot on the envelope. And he has this small poem, which he has, says, Unbeached canoe, emptied this evening of the stuff of survival, for whom do you dance? And on the outside of the envelope he printed, Contents, mini poem. Really nice. And during that summer we had the moonrise in July, which was a fabulous moment that we uh, were able to capture because the film crew happened to be with me. And that moonshot has always inspired me. And during those times alone, oh, here's... <laughs> This is the handle for the door off of Father Bouillard's cabin on Gary Lake that someone from Germany sent me. I did not ask for it, but I have it, and it, no one understands what it is, and when I die, it'll just get tossed out along with a lot of other stuff because no one understands what it is. But to me, his hand, many Inuit hands, my hand all touched the doorknob and that just makes it more intimate and uh, if there's one word that describes how I am in my art, in my desires, and in my canoeing, the word would be intimate. And I do these little drawings on the cheese boxes. There are cheese boxes that uh, hold three pound wheels of cheese and I do little watercolors on them and have hundreds of these that uh, were fun to do and fun to have. This is another one from a long canoe trip in Labrador. It's painted red. It's how I found the machete. And the red color is what they use in the winter to help you not lose it. But someone had put it in a tree trunk, turned his back, walked away. And on a portage, that's where I found it, sitting uh, in a tree trunk. And you can find interesting things on a portage. One time and one time only, I found a potato. And I'm walking along the beachy portage, it's a mile and a half, and I have the water again, and I have the head down when you do it, you hold the straps. And I walked by the potato before I realized I got 10 steps further and I go, that was a potato. I never liked putting my loads down, but I did that time. I put the wanigan on the ground. I went back and picked the potato up. It was still firm, no green eyes, no nothing growing on it. So that night I had French fries. And when I got back to Yellowknife, I went around to the different float bases to find if I could discover who had been on the river before me. And there was a man who was a medical student in the Midwest who had traveled 10 days or so ahead of me, never caught up with him. But I had his address and I wrote him a postcard to thank him for the potato and how good the french fries were. And he replied back to me on an even smaller postcard that said, I wondered where that potato went. <laughs>